<laughs> hey guys, uh, we are live. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this Facebook Live chat. We are in Vancouver for Pride. Um, and uh, just do a little, oh. some intros. I'm Brian, I play Will Gorski in the series. I'm Toby, I play Kapius Onyango. And I'm Max, playing Wolfgang Bogdanov. Nobody knows who I am, and I would prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Lana Wachowski, writer, director, coffee maker. Um, mother. Mother, <laughs> my three boys. It's good coffee, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get anyone else anything? <laughs> uh, we're taking orders on Facebook if you want to order in. Uh, actually, I've never been on any social media. This is the first time. I feel like really honored to sort of yeah. be a part of that. Hello, Facebook. It's a great <laughs> way to thank the fans. Man. We thank you so much for supporting us. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. We, um, we wanted to somehow reach back after fans reached out and sort of saved our show. And it was such an unbelievable experience, really. It, I have never experienced anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. I, you know, we, the show ended, Netflix gave us a, a rather brutal ending email. <laughs> <laughs> then there was like soft emails that came afterwards, but uh, yeah, then, um, yeah, it was really heartbreaking. And the, one of the saddest, hardest things was that I wouldn't work with these beautiful people who I love. And, uh, and then the fans just kept, you guys kept working and working and working, and then Netflix said, okay, we, we get it, but no. <laughs> and then they worked even harder, and within two weeks, I had almost gone to do a whole nother direction in my life, and suddenly Netflix was calling me back, and it was all due to uh, this, uh, populist uprising almost to save a piece of art and it's like how do you say thank you for something like that how do you how do you appreciate it how do you uh kind of mark that as kind of miracle like sort of frank capra bizarre goofy happy ending so we thought facebook that's how <laughs> definitely Okay, that was me talking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> as I do. I mean, how did you guys How did your experience of it go? I'll try to be a little <sighs> Well, I, it was weird. I was in, um, I was in Chichester, uh, which is this little town about two hours south of London. I was doing a play. So my hair is blonde. This, this is- Pretty sexy. <laughs> I mean, a lot of, you, lo you love it, you love it. I'm still, I'm still like, oh, when is it gonna grow out? Um, and it, it, I, uh, it, it was a very weird day because it just, it seems so final. And just to have, for me, the big thing was to have this story with all of our, our characters' lives completely un, unfinished and, and, and unknown. Like they were just sort of floating out there in space somewhere. And that, that's just a feeling that you can never really rectify. I know it's just a show and I know, you know, no, you know, it's not, not just for a me. show, but you, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. It's that's what people would say. You know, it's this like, is, you know, like, you, know, you can't take stuff this personally. It's an industry, too, right. but, but there are some ones that feel different. And this, this, for us, is also an experience. Making this thing is its own story. And to have that be uncompleted felt um, uh, just dark. It was a very, very, very dark feeling. Yeah, for me, it was the first time being on a show like that, like... Uh, like going back into a second season and uh, building up uh, this this epic kind of character that is uh, known all around the world and people react like in in, in the nicest ways, you know, like uh, so much love I'm getting everywhere where I go and yeah, to to know that this is going to end also that I'm not going to see you guys again, yeah. you know, this was like the worst thing when somebody's telling you no. You're not going to meet each other again. It's like uh, something, uh, yeah, I had to digest and yeah, I felt uh, really heartbroken. But then um, you guys fought for it. And uh, yeah, this, this is the best comeback. And so I can really appreciate it even better, I think, when, when I know this is going to be like the yeah. end. This is going to be like a real ritual for us. And we going to do our best to, um, yeah, give back all the love that we became. 
Yeah, I, I, I remember I was in a in my bed when I when I got the news and and I have a very strong emotional attachment to the show because these are the people that I'm learning, you know, a foundation of TV acting and just like about art and culture and not just TV. Yeah, about like just like everything in general art. life, you know. Art making, social and art making. Social art making and yeah, I just, you know, they say don't have any, you know, expectations, but I expect it to keep going and keep doing these amazing things and keep seeing these people and and keep be being able to touch everybody. I, you know, yeah, because it was it was just so amazing. And then when they said no, I was like, oh, that's that's the, oh, that's the show business. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. You have to know this was his first job. Yeah, for, yeah ever. first thing. So it's like, oh, that's yeah, yeah. that's the business yeah. part. Okay. We've been doing the art. Uh, this is the that's like the show business part, and then seeing every single petition signed, it was like a resuscitative heartbeat, north of five hundred thousand, you know, resuscitative heartbeats and emails. And my dad signed the petition in Nigeria. You know, I'm like, that's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it was cool. Mm. It was a really cool moment. Yes pretty unprecedented and it also was a it was it the the business thing when it when it hits you in the face and you're like okay it's all about numbers it's all about money but you're not we're not working that way when you're when you're making the art and you're putting so much of our sort of collective love and I mean making the show is unlike any project I've ever worked on it's so close and everyone just cares so much about everyone and we <laughs> live together and we do have this like whole family thing and and then we all take our clothes off and we <laughs> shoot amazing sex scenes together and <laughs> now the crew yeah, yeah. Okay. and this Everyone? is probably that way we just got a whole bunch of likes on that comment <laughs> they, they just went up like by 2000 <laughs> but that the the show sort of has its own um its its own sort of universe and we enter it and it's uh, so joyful to go into that universe and it's hard work look it's hard we all know that it's the, it's one of the most personal things I've ever done and it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done but I think all of that energy is shared and that makes it um, feel unique and it's I've never worked on a show that had so much of the personalities of the people in the yeah. show, and that's partially because of me, because I take the personalities of everyone and I sort of write to them, and I sort of, and we, t we talk on the set, and then I go, oh, that's a great idea, and I run home, and then I rewrite it and give it the next day, and, and um, that uh, sort of ended up building this thing that you felt was separate from the sort of business universe world, and then it suddenly turned out that it wasn't, and then that was hard. But then <laughs> it turned out that the way that it existed in the world was similar to the way we experienced it. So fans, they had a relationship to the piece of art that was similar to our relationship to the piece of art. And that was validating, and that was, it was something that was a reciprocity that you don't always get in this business. And, and it felt like as much as we loved it, you guys loved it, and that... Um, as much as we cared and wanted it back, you cared and wanted it back, and you, you know, you you worked and you ca you carried us and brought it back, and and you know that's a gift we're so grateful for, and that's why I'm on social media for the first time in my life, saying thanks. Well, let's uh, let's take some questions now. Please. Um, on social media here. Uh, this is from uh, Tam Bradley. Uh. What specific fan reaction has impacted you most personally? Is there a specific like fan moment that you've had that, that really? St I think the stood first out? time <clears throat> we had this already. Like uh, we told people uh, the first time in Positano when the people oh yeah under the balcony were singing what's going we were on doing yoga yeah and all of a sudden we hear this these, these girls like singing the song like so loud and yeah. I mean for hours I mean they would just Did stand they, there. Have been and, over there? Yeah. 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 Oh. We went on a balcony. We were singing with them, and uh, that's when I knew uh, this this thing is like a Rolling Stone, just <laughs> uh, getting bigger and bigger, like an avalanche, you know, yeah. like touching people, touching people's lives, and then, yeah, affecting their lives and their thinking, and uh, 
yeah, being connected to all these people all around the world, also shooting in all these places, in original locations, was uh, just, yeah, opened my mind for so many other things in my life. I, I, I've had, um, I, I had like a couple. I remember when the show first launched, uh, uh, season one, I remember getting on the subway in New York City. I mean, literally, the show came out that day. It was like in June, I think. And there was this guy waiting on the subway track with me with his phone, and he was watching the first episode. And I was just like, oh, wow. I mean, this is a whole new way of... Because I, I, I wasn't used to that at all, like seeing the people can just ac access entertainment um, yeah. anywhere. Um, I know that's like a fan reaction, but that was just sort of like told me something about like who our fans were mm -hmm. and who were the, they were going to be. It was really cool. Yeah. The, the Sao Paulo turnout. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I have never seen so many people in my life. Yeah. Just as far as the eye can Sao see. Paulo. Just singing at the top of their lungs. I saw yeah. the video and the whole ground is moving, just undulating with, <laughs> with love. It's it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Sao Paulo thing was, I mean, I giant heart for Brazil, yeah. I love Brazil and Sao Paulo and I love how they relate to our show. We, you know, I wanted to do a show that was sensual and, you know, we depict pain and we depict death. We, we depict every spectral variety of pain and death. But in our media, we hardly ever depict pleasure and our bodies are one of the the great gifts we have and the, the, our capacity to like absorb pleasure it was something I wanted to talk about. Sensei it was going to be about not just death, but it, I wanted it to be about birth, about life, about pleasure. And when people come up and talk about how Sensei gives them a way to talk about things that normally they can't talk about. I love that. I love how Sensate serves as a kind of language and often like a bridge. We were in, we were in Paris and at this beautiful uh, cafe I love and old cafe floor and, uh, and the, uh, a man was waiting for us to finish and we finished and he stood up and he came over and he put his, he's like, can I hug you? And I'm, I, I'll hug everyone. Come on in. And he says, um, I want to thank you. Sense8 enabled me to come out to my mother. And I had never been able to, we had never been able to have language around it, but Sense8 was a bridge that they sort of enabled her and, I mean, him and his mother to connect and his mother to kind of acknowledge his life in a way she never had. I remember someone on uh, Twitter saying something that really kind of blew me away. Um, that they're Spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> but you know, when, when uh, uh, Will's dad dies in, in season uh, two, and uh, I think there were some, I got a couple comments from people saying that, you know, they had just lost a loved one or a parent, and that it was kind of cathartic mm. to, see, to see someone, um, to see a character really allowed to experience grief mm. and to really experience it in this really ugly, way I mean it's sad and it's uh, it's intense but you know I think there's this this tendency you know especially um, in TV think to make everything commercial and to make everything palatable to make everything well a little bit like real life but just enough so that it's it can still sell downy and you know dish soap and stuff like that I mean to, to really to show someone going through something as ugly as is losing a parent um, and then, but the beautiful thing is, is finding out that he does have a family who takes care of him as well, and that he has to be responsible for now. Um, I don't know. It was just, it's, it's, it's cool when you see people getting it. When you just see people feeling what we are trying to. Yeah, the emotional landscape, the emotional interior lives is also what I was interested in. And we talk about it a lot. It's like so much of the kind of dominant narratives today, they, they're about controlling or suppressing emotion. You're not supposed to feel emotion. Leaders are supposed to have emotion. Heroes are supposed to be strong and not be emotional. But I was like, I want to do the opposite. <laughs> I want to make everybody, uh, the, the point of the show is to explore the emotional landscapes of our lives. 
So, I, but th- moving on. This uh, is a. Uh, this is a. So everyone's asking this question right now. <laughs> That's in a bowl. Um, can answer this. Then. Is Wolfgang gonna be okay? This is all in caps, and I think there's six <laughs> question marks. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> let's vote. <laughs> if you send money to keep Wolfgang alive. One eight hundred. You'll see the number where you can donate down here. <laughs> Please save Wolfgang. Kids? Is that is that the answer? Because I'm curious too, yeah, actually. Me too. I mean, I, I have no idea. What's up with Wolfgang? Well, the real Lana Wachowski, <laughs> because I'm an actor, been hired to play Lana Wachowski. She would never come on social media, never. Lana's in a bunker somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> she's writing. She swore. <laughs> swore she would never. She's writing, not because she believes so much in the fans that they're going to go out and actually create so many more fans. Lon is actually going ahead and writing the entire season three. Oh, oh no. Internet. That's like... <laughs> Why? Internet broken. <laughs> now, I think we just got cut off. <laughs> I think the feed went dead. <laughs> they pulled the plug. <laughs> you see a helicopter like that? Uh, yeah. Well, we're, yeah, we're writing, we're writing right now. We're, we're writing The Fate of Wolfgang. And it kind of depends on how this Will week goes, right? And, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like on how, how good a how behavior Max is on. You know, I mean, he, I mean, you're here. This is a good sign. This, this is a really good sign. Good starter. Yeah. Okay. I let's, think he's going to. Let's be go okay. to the next one. I, I think right. we'll be all right. Obviously, we can't answer this question right now, but you can start torturing me. Yeah. With a... Here's a here's a cool one. Um, how often do you all get together when not filming? Is is are there solid friendships to carry over in your day to day? We're sensei. Yeah. We can visit each other like all the time. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. in our dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every morning at seven a.m. Uh, Sensor. Sometimes I see them in a the club when <laughs> I'm dancing. It's like oh. I just like appear. Yeah. <laughs> oh brother. <laughs> no, but seriously, as much as we can, mm. because yeah, everybody is like kind of busy. Mm. These guys are working. I will work. Like pretty soon, I was taking my time off, my family, and yeah, sometimes it's also good like being away for some time to yeah, to get that feeling back. Like I need to see them again, and yeah, we also met in Paris. Oh. It was like oh. beautiful. And oh, it's, oh yeah. Yeah. We went to the catacombs. Yeah. And the Pompidou, and it was. And the Louvre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And then we walked around, and it was raining, and we were all yeah. along the river. Such a great and time. So beautiful. Oh. So yes, we're spending time together <laughs> outside of film. It's sort of together. like family, where you 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 know you try to make time, and everyone has busy lives, and you have your own families. But if you can, and you drift close to each other, then as soon as you are sort of close, you say, "Hey, I'm going to be." And I, we were in London, and yeah. you were. Toby visited me in Berlin. Yeah. yeah. We went to go yeah. see London. Uh, we went to go see Brian's show. Yeah, these guys came up, and see me in a play, which you know means it a lot. It happens. It, but it's not. But yeah. that's not usual. I mean, yeah. I, that, that's not a normal. Um, yeah, we make it sound no. so casual, but mostly <laughs> yeah, it's, your movie ends and <laughs> it's over. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I need a break. You know, sometimes you, it's over, and you're like, okay, I, I love you guys, but I, I, I kind of need, uh, you know. Let's yeah. let's not communicate for, but for whenever a while. we meet it's like But this is this is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, you know, you get home you just be like, Oh my god, you guys, you know, I, I miss you so bad, you know. Okay. Uh <laughs> getting a little emotional. Here's a here's a question from Sophia. Um a lot of scenes happen in more place than once. Uh it, it uh what's it like to recreate a performance you performed months earlier? Um, well that's how you see it, you know. Sometimes it's just another chance to do the scene again, like with another kind of tone, another, uh, yeah, in another color, kind of atmosphere, if you will. another color, yeah. And um, yeah, um, we're, we're pretty much experimenting uh, whenever we're shooting. It's not about like getting the perfect scene or make it like just uh, the same way we did it already. So it's, yeah, it's something that we are kind of enjoying, like doing something. Um, not better, just different, or just yeah, to see what comes out when when some months um, are in between and some time uh, is in between. Then you can like uh, see it, yeah, 
you have a different perception when you uh, are on a different movie set in a different country and uh, remember some lines um, that maybe um, say something else to you. Then yeah, uh, ring true in a different way. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I, it's that's a beautiful chance we get there. Oh. I feel like it's a big part of like the show. The show itself ends up being such a mirror of of what the show is about. And I was trying to make a show that's about this sort of quantum nature of life and that we, things, things like our, the idea that our identity is fixed and that we're the same all the time is such a false, it's a, such a false idea. And so the way that we actually make the show ends up sort of embodying this kind of quantum idea. Like there are some scenes that actually they they become fully realized in a way because the person who the actors were was at the beginning of the sequence is not who they were at the end of the sequence. Yeah. Like you and Kala, the kiss before the big love scene. It's like that scene we shot forever. We started it and then we ended the shoot with that scene. And who you and Tina were at the end or that moment couldn't exist without all of that life and discussions and you know explorations and tension and then finally that beautiful moment happened that I don't think was possible at the beginning of the shoot and so it's like the way we shoot and the way we go back and the way we re-experience like who we are as both actors and characters and trying to capture just the moment of it is also in the in the show. I also feel like that happens between seasons as well. I mean, I, I, I went back recently and watched uh, season one and uh, it, it was it was incredible to watch. I mean, even just like to see people's faces, hmm. you know, people, people didn't have certain experiences on their faces yet. Hmm. You know, I, I didn't. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I know, you sure like, a little bit different. Know. You know, you know different, 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 <laughs> different haircut. Well, yeah. Different. Well, look. But Although, you, I mean, but, but there's something about you know, like that the, we we take. I know it can be frustrating for the fans, but you know, we we do take such a such a long period of time in between seasons. In a way, is good for us because you get to go out and reconnect with your life in a really big way, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe you know, do you know, do like another film or you know, do a play or something, and fall in love, fall out of love, you know, move, mm. um, travel. Um, and, and you can see it when people come back to the show. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't even recognize myself from season one. I'm like, I really, I watch season one and I'm like, who is that person? You know, who and that's... I? But also what's yeah. happening in the editing room, like when you uh, combine all these scenes together, then oh, so you, you get out something that is way bigger than just the moment you spend on set and yeah. uh, create there. You know, I mean, when we, you guys should have seen the <laughs> Who Am I, the shooting of yeah. the Who Am I montage. They would come to the set and be like, Lana, Lana, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> what is yeah. this? I don't I get it. What terrible. is this? <laughs> In the end, this is a great question. Well, yeah. This is a question for Lana. Um, why did you choose our current cast for this show? What does it, f how, what does it feel for you? Like, how does it feel for you? What, what kind of energy did you get from this cast? Hmm. Hmm. Well, <laughs> they should go into the South silent booth now. <laughs> we're, da <laughs> we're dating Britain. I'm going to date actor number two. <laughs> what was your first? Um, the, uh, yeah, I, ask, uh, I get asked about casting all the time. Carmen Cuba, who helped me hey. cast this, she's amazing. She's actually in the show as the casting That's director right. of uh, with uh, Kit Wrangler. Hi, Carmen. Are you out there? Um, but mostly, I cast based on energy, and I meet someone, and you know, sometimes I'll go through the kind of pretense of doing the scene, but really, I'm just trying to feel the energy. At one point. When when I met Max, I was just like, you know, Max, I don't even really care about the season. <laughs> Let's just talk, and we just talked, and it was just about a feeling. And you know, it's sometimes there's just a magic that you kind of get try to get yourself out of the way of, and you don't, you you know, you you try to let let the sort of 
Like, I think it's actually kind of beautiful that coffee has ended up getting played by two actors. I mean, again, to explore this nature of quantum identity, it's sort of like that that ended up happening, ended up being another layer of the way that I was trying to discuss identity. And so it was like sort of beautiful that this one actor who was quite good at being innocent and boyish then would be replaced by an actor who was sort of quite had a boyish quality and a boyish energy, but was ready to be more of a somebody you could believe could become a political leader. And that was like, and also fall in love and be sort of sensual with another body. And that sort of sort of ended up being perfect in a way. And I was like, I wouldn't have ever designed it like that, but it happened yeah. and it ended up being better than I could have designed it. Just like all of these cast members are better than I could have ever sort of consciously willed into being. But in a way, it's like what you were talking about before, is how you know, people really do change. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's and that how you have to accept things. Like during the process, you cannot control everything, especially not yeah. yourself and yeah. everything around you. You have sometimes have to. Which is hard because like, we want to do that so hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you listen really carefully control. and then try to ride the wave like it comes, and then yeah, you, you find the best yeah. way to do it. Let's see. Uh, um, what city? Um, what's a city that you uh, haven't been to that you'd like to film or or work in? Mm. Boy, so many. I mean, because you, you, you filmed, I mean, if you think about, I mean, Speed Racer and The Matrix this and, and uh, I mean, Cloud Atlas. I mean, you've, is there anywhere you haven't filmed yet that you that you would really love to? The moon. <laughs> the moon? Yeah. We're going the moon. I was going to say the moon. We're going next. We, we, we actually were really joking, uh, you know, like, we uh, watch, this is the season where Lana's going to be like, so what do you feel about skydiving? Yeah, face <laughs> jumping. Like, I'd like to film a, a, a fight scene. Orgy. Um, <laughs> <air. Air. laughs> oh, God. No, you did that thing you do when I you were know. really thinking about something. Yeah. Your, yeah. your hands went together. <laughs> oh, forget I said that. An orgy. Well, I start with compiling a list of all of the things that the cats are the most afraid of. Yes. And then I begin oh, designing plots so that they would basically intersect with all of their worst fears. Spiders, caves, snakes, and water. water. <laughs> all of it. They, they slowly realized how evil I am over the years. Uh, yeah, look, I think the world is full of astonishing cities that I have yet to film in, but I've traveled to. My wife and I love to travel. Uh, the world is full of magic everywhere, and people and cultures are so, they're so, they're just inviting to your own sense of identity to expand inside of, and so I like going everywhere. I mean, I was, I'd seen pictures, my friends had been to Sao Paulo, but I had never been there, and I was like, all right, I'm going to design this whole sequence to go to Sao Paulo and be in game, and it turned out to be one of the most magical experiences of my life. Yeah. I wish we should film here, in Vancouver. Yeah, Vancouver. but everyone shoots here. Everyone <laughs> in the whole world <laughs> shoots here. Us. We're the only people who don't shoot here. I <laughs> but I love Vancouver, so I would be, right. and the Pride has been super fun so far. Thanks, Vancouver. More fun. Yeah, yeah. Really Antarctica. Took care of us. Um, uh, Carrie Hill wants to know if she can buy us all a beer or maybe a tequila. Tequila oh. cubed. Tequila, tequila, tequila square. Tequila square. Tequila square. Yeah. Tequila. Tequila square. Sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Max was like, yeah. Please. No. Now? What do they have at that restaurant? <laughs> <Where? Where>? Now? <laughs> no, we went to this place called uh, the Steamworks uh, Brewery. Yes. We had what a little have? tourist it was, moment. It was tequila, tequila beer. Oh, no. beer garita. Beer garita. Beer garita. Yeah. Necessary. Um, let's see. What's the best thing about being a part of the cast of Sense8? Um, I, I mean, it's, it, it really is about the people. It's about the people. And I think for me, the, um, the, the sort of process of making the show, which... <sighs> Getting naked with getting all your paid, sexy most <laughs> traveling getting and uh, yeah, <laughs> no, having an amazing time. Like we getting pretty much spoiled. Like when we're shooting, we can like say uh, what we need and we get it. And uh, I yeah, spoil just, my children. Just to stay creative. No, them. it's 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 in a positive way. I agree. I still appreciate that. No, it's still uh, yeah. 
learning so many things, uh, which is the most amazing thing for me mm. to like go to all these places, getting to know the people there and see their, how they live and yeah, all, all these amazing things I'm learning, like about myself, about this group dynamic that we have and um, yeah. It's, it's amazing to just watch them grow. Like, yeah. I mean, I do feel like a parent sometimes. I mean, when you say you can't recognize yourself, I mean, you, how you guys have evolved as actors and artists and also... We don't even need rehearsals anymore. No. Like, we can <laughs> just, just shoot. This is <laughs> That's the only way we do the show. We just basically show up, we get a camera, I get Daniele, I put my arms around him, John Toll is flying around, and we just start shooting. It's like a big dance. We're just constantly moving, we're constantly playing, and then usually we end after 14 hours of shooting and then we go party yeah. <laughs> right yeah i think that for me is that that's the great thing is yeah. like is really that we can going also out party together yeah, yeah. i mean <laughs> it, just having that connection with each other yeah. and you know all the memories i can't tell you how many cities we've we've just been up like in a hotel rooms talking and listening to music but also that you nice. guys know my family you know oh, yeah. Also yeah. Yeah. well speaking speaking of, of which uh we got Ew, yeah. we have some more partying uh to get to yeah. here at vancouver pride so i guess we should we should wrap this up <gasps> okay um, well time's running <laughs> when you have fun time's running wow. out. uh thank you guys so much for thank you for coming here and uh and spending your your afternoon with us thanks for my social media thank cherry you. happy pride happy pride thanks facebook